G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to have a look at some of the trade rumors that are swirling and give you a bit of an update. I did this about a month or two ago and we'll keep it a semi-regular thing, like a monthly update on uh, some of the trade rumors that are going on right now. And I have to say, uh, this is probably the most in-depth level of trade rumor I've ever seen this early in the season. We've got you know, discussion about which teams players prefer out of a trade, like really specific stuff. And I think that just goes to show that the nature of the way this game's covered and player movement is, you know, exploding, which makes sense. It's a very popular thing to talk about. And it is something that gets clicks and engagement. So you can understand the motive, but you also get the sense that there's a lot more access to behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, Jono's knowing more intimate stuff about certain deals that are happening than we've ever seen before. So I want to talk about all the uh, deals that are up in the air at the moment. Uh, I want to also talk about some, some rule change stuff that's going to happen that's going to affect the way players move clubs. But before we get into it, if you could do me a favor, if you're enjoying the content or you want to see more footy content generally, or you want to see trade and draft stuff come the end of the year, we're going to be all over that stuff. So if you haven't subscribed, it would mean a lot to me if you did, because I'm very close to hitting 28,000 subscribers. And my goal is to hit that by the end of the month. So uh, I'd really appreciate it if you did hit subscribe. Cool. So let's take a quick gander at um, you know some of the stuff that's been talked about with regard to the mid season trade period. Now, this is something that's been on the horizon for a little while now. We've been hinted at that it's going to happen, you know, sometime coming soon. And, um, you know, I think earlier this year, there was a suggestion that 2025 seems the most likely time for us to launch a mid-season trade period, specifically where players can move clubs in exchange for other players or picks in the middle of the season during a predefined window of time, which I'm, you know, I don't think it's been made public what that is. It probably would be just like one business week. So an article earlier this year said that 2025 looks more likely and 2024 was probably too soon. That makes sense. There's a lot of moving parts with clubs having traded future picks and stuff like that. So it makes sense to put it in the future and, you know, build the infrastructure around what that would look like as well and, you know, when to do it. However, there's been an update. There is a bit of pushback from interstate clubs suggesting that a mid-season trade period would unfairly favor teams in Victoria because player movement between those clubs would be a lot easier. And I have to say, I hadn't even thought of that, and that is definitely true. And to be specific, getting a player to uproot his life, to move interstate, whether it be Adelaide, Perth, to some extent even Sydney, which is not even that far away, or move to Brisbane or vice versa, that would be quite logistically difficult for a player to get up and move his life. Like, you know, especially if they've got kids or, you know, a house somewhere. I mean, you have to think that if a player is going to move in the middle of the season, it may or may not have been a decision made, you know, since round one. Otherwise, they would have moved the pre previous trade period. And what I'm getting at there is, you know, I think what we'll see is this own little market in Victoria where players are more willing to move clubs if it's another team in Melbourne because they might not even need to leave their house. That probably is unfair. I know I'm not Victorian and it probably doesn't sound good coming from me, but I do think that is a legitimate concern. There's been a lot of toing and froing about, you know, what sort of players can be traded in the mid-season trade period, which I found strange. Like there's a suggestion that they might make it so that only fringe players, for instance, could be traded. I mean, that one seems a little bit weird, placing rules on that. Either way, it doesn't really alleviate the disadvantage that clubs outside of Melbourne would have. I mean, what do we even think about a mid-season trade period? Personally, you know, I, I actually agree with Chris Scott. I've got a really good Chris Scott quote. Uh, there's an article on the, on the AFL website. Chris Scott said, I dislike it. I think every season should stand on its own. If you worked really hard to get yourself to second on the ladder and the team, which is fourth, trades away first round picks to get a player and it changes the season with five games to go, I have to ask, is that how you want it to work? And I do kind of agree with this. My personal take is I do like the idea that you use the trade and draft periods that already exist in the framework that we have to prepare for the season as best you can. And it's incumbent on the teams to prepare their own lists with adequate depth in each position. So if you have an injury to a key forward that you really need to replace, it is kind of incumbent on you to build the list in time for that season that is able to accommodate that to some extent. A good example of this is maybe what's happening with Collingwood, right? So McStay, they already knew, had done an ACL going into this year. Now, if there was a possibility that Rory Lobb could move from the Western Bulldogs to Collingwood this season, I'm sure you might have opinions on how good Rory Lobb is and he's probably not as good as Dan McStay or whatever, but I don't really like the idea of that, that, that Collingwood, I'm focusing on Collingwood here, it's not an anti-Collingwood rant, but it's a really good example of what I'm trying to demonstrate here in that if they did have the facility to get a Rory Lobb midway through the season and the list is suddenly much better prepared. Not a huge fan of that on top of all the unfairness about the interstate clubs and stuff. 
G'day guys, just letting you know that this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a service that helps connect you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. The prospect of starting therapy can be quite a challenging proposition. It may be the case that the right therapist for you and your specific needs doesn't live in the same area as you, or sometimes people find the face-to-face -face aspect of it quite challenging. The BetterHelp service helps overcome these challenges because you can schedule your therapy sessions, first of all, at your convenience, and you can do them via phone call, video chat, or messaging if that's what you prefer. How you get started is you click on the link in the description of this video, that takes you to a questionnaire which helps them assess your specific needs. And in most cases, you will be matched with a therapist within 48 hours. And another helpful aspect of it is if you're matched with a therapist that you don't think is right for you, you can switch to a different one at no additional cost. So if you think you are someone who could benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp and click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash truefooty. Clicking that link below both supports the channel, but also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can speak to a therapist and see if it helps you. However, one thing that is likely to come in next year, apparently, again, according to afl.com.au, is that trading mid-season draft picks might be a thing as early as next year. So specifically, if you hold pick one in the mid-season draft, you could trade that to another club, assuming that club also has a list spot. And you could probably combine it with picks at the end of the year national draft as well. I mean, I don't see an argument against this. I don't know how much movement we would really see. Does it rely on being able to trade you know, players as well. I'm not too sure, but that is certainly something that's on the agenda. And one final other rule change that is being considered right now is allowing teams that didn't make the finals to have access to players as free agents after six years. So if you're unaware, you become a free agent eight years, you become a restricted free agent in some cases or unrestricted, but under the proposed new rules, if you didn't make the finals that year, you could have the same access to a player as a free agent after just six years, which is very, very interesting. It says in the article here, battling clubs have always struggled to attract free agents. Only three restricted free agents have moved to bottom six teams since free agency started in 2012. So yeah, there was a little bit of a belief that the strongest teams get stronger and it kind of works against equalization in that sense. Do you think, and this is, I'm putting this question to you, the audience, do you think this would potentially potentially, you know, incentivize a little bit of tanking at the end of the year. If like, if your team's eighth and, you know, striving to play for the finals, obviously every team wants to play finals, but if for you, if it's choice between eighth and playing finals or ninth and being able to get your primary target as a free agent, I think that would create some interesting discussions internally, but let me know in the comments what you think. All right, let's talk about some of these rumors. So um, just to rattle off a few players that I discussed in my last video that have subsequently signed. Um, Andrew McGrath has re-signed with Essendon. He was a free agent, I think at the end of this year. Jamari Hagen has re-signed with the Western Bulldogs. Oli Florin has also signed a long-term deal with the Sydney Swans. He was a free agent. So now let's talk about some of the players that um, you know have not been signed up. Well, actually, I'll start with a guy who is actually contracted, but one of the more interesting rumors is Daniel Rioli, who has apparently been linked to Gold Coast, or at least that Gold Coast have you know a high level of interest in him. He's contracted to the end of 2027. Um, so whatever deal would happen, it would require a trade. Um, and this is going to create an interesting opportunity here because the Gold Coast Suns hold two first round picks this year, their own pick and the Western Bulldogs pick from last year's trade. So Richmond could be tempted by this, assuming that Rioli is at all interested, which, you know, there is no actual evidence of that, but there does seem to be clear interest from the Gold Coast Suns to get him. But Richmond would love some draft collateral. The only thing though, is that they're also, you know, linked to another number of deals where other players at Richmond are potentially going to request trades or leave through free agency. So I think Richmond will need to strike a fine balance between losing too many players all in one hit, even if it does get them some draft collateral. Other players that have been linked to trades, you know, Harry Perryman is one. I think he is a free agent at the end of the season. Pretty good underrated player for the Giants in my opinion. And both the Adelaide clubs are linked as being quite interested as are Sydney and the Essendon Footy Club. One that was reported on quite heavily this week, which I'm sure you've seen, is Will Hayward being offered six years to join the Carlton Footy Club. Carlton have seemed to have been seeking that powerful half forward player who can sort of impact through the midfield a little bit as well for a number of years now. You know, I think they went hard after Papley. They did get Jack Martin, but Will Haywood is kind of an underrated forward in my opinion as well. Again, being South Australian, both South Australian clubs have interest in him. Carlton have actually tabled a six year offer, which is significant. And the Demons are also linked to at least being interested, which creates an interesting flow on effect to Jack Martin, who is out of contract. He's been at Carlton for five years now. And I believe he's 29 years old. So finding a suitor for him will be interesting 
interesting, but it could create this merry-go-round where maybe Jack Martin finds a new club and Will Haywood potentially goes to Carlton. I'm not necessarily predicting that, but you can see the link there. The Age reported that clubs are circling Jack Martin, but it doesn't say necessarily who. Like if he was returning home to Western Australia, you'd think from an age profile point of view, Fremantle would make more sense than West Coast, but uh, nonetheless, just passing that on. Cam Zohar will be one of the more interesting stories from my perspective this year. He will become a free agent at the end of this season. And, um, you know, I did a video on North Melbourne's list the other day and I urged them to, you know, consider the lack of experience on the list and, and hopefully try and rectify that. So in my opinion, Cam Zoha would be a bad loss. Now, it could generate them some decent compensation through free agency, but looking at North Melbourne's list, I don't think young talent is necessarily the key focus for them right now. I think they've accumulated that quite well. I think they need to focus more on staying you know, competitive. Now he's pretty openly said he wants to play at a team that's winning games and playing finals. And with all due respect to North Melbourne, it doesn't look like at this stage, much is gonna change in the next six months to suggest that North Melbourne are close to doing that. So he's been linked to a number of clubs. I think he nearly moved to Essendon a couple of years ago, or at least they chased him. And both Western Australian clubs are apparently interested to some extent. I do again think he would be a good fit for Fremantle. I'm certainly taking him at West Coast, but that one's an interesting wait and see. So let's circle back to the Richmond players that I alluded to that are potentially linked to moves. So we talked about Daniel Rioli. The other one is Liam Baker. Um, you know, this one has been, this is the one that's actually been reported on more intimately than I've seen most trade rumors reported on, you know, this early in the season. And maybe that's because I subscribe to a lot of Western Australian media and naturally he's been linked to those clubs and a potential move home. But been offered a long-term deal to stay at Richmond and, you know, potentially there's a chance that he captains the football club one day, but it does seem like there's a lot of noise that he might leave. Mixed messaging, big time mixed messaging on, you know, which club he's likely to go to in Western Australia if he was to move. I do understand that Liam Baker tends to sign these extensions quite late to stay, you know, at Richmond. He's done that in the past, but just hypothesizing, like I've seen so many conflicting rumors about, you know, he's dead set on playing for West Coast. And, you know, in other cases, I think Tom Morris reported that he definitely wants to get to Fremantle. So I'm not too sure what to make of that, but there does seem to be a lot of noise. And that's what I mean when I say I don't remember, you know, in May of a season, reports coming through specifically on like picking a specific club. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Another Tiger that is also linked to a potential move to Western Australia was Jack Graham. Now I commented on this in my video I did on the True Eagle YouTube channel. For Eagles fans, you can find that. It's a new Eagles fan, uh, fan channel I've started this year. But Jack Graham's a free agent at the end of this year and been previously linked. I think he met with Port Adelaide. I think that's what it was. He met with Port Adelaide last year for a potential move. Um, it obviously didn't happen. He was a pre-agent at the time. Now he's going to be a legitimate free agent. And the one club that has been named this year has been the West Coast Eagles. So again, you look at this mix of players here with Richmond, I do know that they need to get in young talent, but Liam Baker, Daniel Rioli, Jack Graham, can they afford to lose all three? Considering they already have a pretty good draft hand, like I don't know how ham they need to go at draft picks this year. I suppose they could push some assets into next year. So that'll be interesting. I think Richmond are going to be a very interesting list management case study going forward. I'll be keeping a close eye on them. There's a few more. Uh, Josh Battle has been a name that uh, you know I only noticed was out of contract recently and then the report started to come, but he's definitely getting some interest. He's got a long-term offer from the Saints to stay, but apparently there is interest from Hawthorne, North Melbourne, and Collingwood. Collingwood, of course, having lost Nathan Murphy at the start of this year. Unrestricted free agent. I'm not too sure why. I don't know if that's down to pay or you know where they finish in the top 10 BNF. I don't think he's been delisted and re-rookied. Uh, forgive me, I could be wrong on that. Either way, unrestricted free agent uh, means that there could be a move here. And on the topic of the Saints and of course the Blues, the Saints are going hard at a number of players. We saw you know an article a few weeks back that targeting guys like Luke Davies Uniac, Andrew Brayshaw, and uh, now Jacob Wiedering. They're offering him a million and a half, according to Sam McClure anyway. And we know that Sam McClure doesn't ever get these things wrong but nonetheless it seems to be reported across the board that they've made a monster offer for Jacob Wiedering. Now I think Carlton are probably pretty safe. I don't think they're going to have any retention issues. It sounds like a lot of the senior players at Carlton you know made some sort of unwritten pact that they were going to you know stay and potentially sacrifice a little bit of salary. I read that in an article so we'll see. I think Wiedering's pretty safe but nonetheless I thought I would just let you know uh, the interest in him. Again on the Saints, Tim Membry is an unrestricted free agent at the end of this season. At coming to the end of a three-year deal at St Kilda and because he was delisted and re-rookied by Sydney not even the club he's at but by Sydney he becomes an unrestricted free agent for life which is kind of kind of a quirky rule but either way he's the one to watch if St Kilda are really moving things around you could see him going but I think he's you know still a pretty good player there was a Patrick Dangerfield to Adelaide rumor uh, that seems to have been talked down pretty immediately um, you know it came out 
few weeks back that Dangerfield was seeking a move back to the Crows. You know, this one seems odd to me. Like, he seems pretty established in Geelong. Like, he wanted to go back there closer to home, I presume, and at 34 years of age moving back to the Crows would be weird. We did see the Crows kind of poured some cold water on this, but it was kind of evasive. It says, our rule is we can't comment on any players, so we'll continue to sidestep that. But he says, there's always so much talk. It's actually gotten worse over the last couple of years around free agency and trade. So it didn't really say it wasn't true. But this one just is hard to get my head around. So we'll wait and see, but I'm surely not, right? Talked about Rory Lobb already uh, in this video, but there was a link to Collingwood, which kind of makes sense. He's been pushed out. And again, I think I read somewhere that they said if there was a mid-season trade period this year, Rory Lobb probably would end up at Collingwood, who obviously need a little bit of tall timber. So that's why that example popped into my head. That one seems to be, you know, relatively telegraphed. I don't, I don't think there's too much doubt that Rory Lobb's probably going to be at a different club next year, if any club at all. Before we finish the video, I'll rattle through some players that don't really have to much of an update, but are still big names nonetheless. Ben Ainsworth has a four-year deal to stay at the Gold Coast Suns. He's yet to make a call in his future, which is probably not a hugely promising sign, um, but he is a free agent. Who knows? Maybe he's just waiting to maximize that for, um, contract. Bailey Smith has a two-year deal from the Western Bulldogs to stay. Why is it not longer? It's a two-year deal to get him to free agency. Generally, players don't sign massive contracts you know, past free agency, and, and he's coming off an ACL, which means his negotiating power for a contract wouldn't be as strong as it potentially would be in two years. So it doesn't mean he's leaving, the fact that it's only two years, but it does say there's an industry belief he will probably be gone. There's also no update on Hugh McCluggage or Jared Berry from the Brisbane Lions. Again, I don't know. I don't think there's too much real risk of them leaving. But nonetheless, quality free agency players that uh, are out of contract. Same thing with Isaac Cumming. Also, Tim English. No real suggestion that uh, there's a contract in place for him at the Western Bulldogs. I'm not too sure. But equally, you know, no further talk of him moving clubs or anything like that. And then you've got some older players like Dustin Martin. There was a suggestion, you know, maybe he finishes his career at the Gold Coast Suns. More recent chatter has suggested that he might just wind up at the end of the year. It's hard to imagine him playing on past this year, to be honest. I think this would be a good time for Dusty to go, but that's just a pretty half-baked opinion for me, to be honest. Uh, a couple of Eagles boys. Elliot Yo has been talked about as a potential trade target for established clubs. A little bit of noise of the Eagles, like low-balled him on a contract. I don't necessarily know if that's true. It sounds like he now has a contract in front of him and it's probably going to be for a couple of years at least. I did also read that Andrew Gaff is um, you know, not going to retire at the end of this year. He has not played since round one. He's been playing in the Waffle Eagles this year. He'd like to finish his career somewhere else, so potentially moves on as a unrestricted free agent or whatever. But again, it's hard to see a market for Andrew Gaff. And one other one that I have talked about a lot on this channel with Logan McDonald. You know, there was a bit of noise a few months back that Fremantle were heavily interested and hasn't really been any further news on that since I last discussed it, other than the fact that I think he's come out and said he's pretty keen to stay. So that's probably the update there. But anyway, guys, that is me trying to rattle off all of the trade rumors that are currently swirling. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I think I've been fairly exhaustive with this, whilst also acknowledging I probably haven't captured absolutely everything. So let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.